Okay, now let's continue with some more advanced uh, waypoint editing. Here's our little mission first. Let me explain this this circle here. That's it's because of this balloon. We have now have uh, the multi the dogfight multiplayer um, uh, missions and balloons now have an uh, observation radius property. And this tells the balloon uh, how far ahead it can it can look, and you can see that in the in the in the in the, uh, the map screen. You, it works as some sort of a radar, but in this single mission mode, it it has no meaning. So I'm just setting it to to one. Okay. Here's our two seater uh, flying about, and here's our little fighter. Well, let's say we want to to add two fighters as an escort for this this two seater, and we want them to to follow them, to follow the two seater around, and protect it. And let's say the two fighters are already in the air. So let's start by creating the two objects, planes. And I'll choose one albatross D two, D three. Put them, put it here. Click. Create linked entity again. Double click. Country is Germany. Normal AI. And I want it to start in the air instead of on the ground. So I have to click here. Skin payload, etc. Okay. Okay, it starts in the air, but it is still on the ground, so I have to give it some altitude. 500 meters should be enough. Okay, it's now up in the air somewhere. When the game starts, this aircraft will be in the air, but it has absolutely no clue what it should do. First, let us begin by cloning this object because we want to have two of them. Now, I could create another object, but uh, it's quite easy to, to make a copy, just like in uh, Windows. Select it, Control C, click, Control. V and have a copy. Of course, you can also use the right mouse and say copy and paste. Now, some new stuff. I want this to be the leader, and this is wingman. So I want. Uh, I have to tell him that. How do we do that? Double click, and somewhere here says target ID, and I can I can define a target for this object. So it says here add by dialog. I get the list and I have to select 1271, which is this one. See, now you absolutely need to know the number because otherwise you can't see in this in this list which one it is. Okay, double click it. Okay, and you see a red line, like just like the trigger one. But this one means that this aircraft belongs to this one. Okay. Now we need to tell these aircraft what to do. We already told this one that it belongs to this one, so we will always follow him, follow him around. But this is not enough because we need, need to tell the leader that it has to follow this aircraft around. Well, we could start by defining one waypoint, so we 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 tell them where to go at, uh, when the mission starts. Let's do that. MCUs, trigger waypoint, click, and somewhere around the airfield here. And again some altitude, 500 meters, double click, let's say 200 meters, up. and a speed of, I don't know, 150 kilometer an hour. Find objects. Um, again, there are multiple ways of doing this. I could click find objects and then click the object here, or I can use the right mouse button. And there's a object menu and it says add object and I can click here. Now this waypoint is tied to this object. Now when the mission starts we have to tell this aircraft to go here so we could use this mission begin translator again. Let's say find target and click here. When the mission starts this aircraft will take off and this aircraft will go directly to this waypoint. 
Now when the aircraft reaches this waypoint, the wingman, it should then cover the two-seater. Of course what we could do is make a similar path like this and it will fly somewhere near the two-seater but that's of course not the way to do it because it if a two-seater is, is somehow uh, being attacked or if the fighters are being distracted then the two-seater might be here and the fighters will still be somewhere near this waypoint. So there's a better way of doing that. And that's using a command cover. That's in this list. Command cover. You put it anywhere on the map. It doesn't matter. We have to tie it to this object. Difficult to see which one. Here. We're going to trigger it. We have to trigger it. All these commands, this is very important, will always have to be triggered. Because if you just define them and say that they belong to this object, then nothing is going to happen because they have to be triggered. They have to be told that they are going to be activated. We're going to do that by using this waypoint. Once the aircraft hits this waypoint, it then triggers off this command. Command cover. Now we know that it belongs to the aircraft, but what should it cover? We can do that by using the find target. So click find target and hit this object. So they will now fly to the waypoint and get the command to cover this aircraft. And basically that's it. The two CT will then fly through all the waypoints and the two aircraft here will always follow it around. Now let's say we want these two aircraft to land as well. If we just keep it like this then um, the two seater will land and I think the two fighters will just circle around it forever because they don't know what to do next. So there are ways of telling the aircraft to stop uh, covering two seater. And we can do that by using the command force complete. Here it is. Click anywhere on the map, connect it to the aircraft, the leading aircraft. And again we have to trigger it. So let's use this last waypoint because then the two seater is back at the base to trigger off find target this command. You see that one one trigger can trigger uh, uh, one, one waypoint can trigger off multiple new commands or waypoints. Okay, there's one way of doing it. Now it the aircraft knows it 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 should stop with uh, covering the two-seater but it doesn't know what next to do so when the two-seater has reached this waypoint it will land and these two aircraft will just circle around somewhere around here they need to be told to land as well so we're going to put in a new command land let's use the same airfield somewhere around here find objects connect it to the aircraft like so and now is a tricky bit we could you could think that well once we uh, the two-seater gets here you can use this trigger to say stop covering two-seater you could use them as well to say and land here but here's the trick it needs time the the um, the computer needs time to process all these events and commands so the manual says that you have to wait at least I don't know half a second or a second before you uh, enter a new command so you first have to use this command force complete then wait a second or so and then trigger off the command to land how can you do that well there is this special trigger called timer it's here you place it here the position doesn't matter. We trigger it off, like so, and we configure it. Double click, zero minutes, let's say one second, or let's say two seconds. I think one is enough. Okay. This is a simple timer. It will just wait for one second, do nothing, and when one second has passed, it can trigger off something else, like the command to land the two fighters. Okay, now we have a more complex mission. We have a two-seater that will take off. 
follow these waypoints, land. The two-seater rent reaches the last waypoint. It will tell the two fighters, the two fighters which have been told to cover the way uh, the two-seater, to stop cover the uh, covering the two-seater and land also at the same airfield. Okay, here's an example of some more advanced uh, use of the waypoints.